There's this, this uh, wonderful thing that was written by a guy by the name of Tom Powers Jr., who also is involved in another split-off movement called All Addicts Anonymous. They do things very correctly. They're an interesting little group up in northeast uh, New York. I had the pleasure of going up and going to the spot, and it's their, their, their literature is very fascinating. But anyway, he uh, took an economic uh, model, which is Gresham's Law. And Gresham's Law says that bad currency tends to drive out good. In other words, if they're valued the same, that the bad currency, people are going to use that more than they will the good. And so it, it drives the good down. And that this has been operative in Alcoholics Anonymous, that weak AA is tending to drive out the strong. So there are three ways of working AA. When we use coffee as a metaphor because it works really good, right? Strong, the original way, proven powerful and reliably effective for over 70 years. The medium way, which is not so strong, not so safe, not so sure, not so good, but still effective. And the weak way, which is no way at all, but literally a false teaching. It's a corruption of the stated program. So what's strong? You do all 12 steps and keep on taking them. Keep on taking them. Practice rigorous honesty. Takes and continues to make restitution. No, we're not perfect. <laughs> um, admits faults. Prays and meditates daily, goes to two or more AA meetings weekly, actively works the 12th step. Bill, what's medium AA? I think we're all familiar with medium. If you've uh, been around any length of time, you've done medium. Yes. Um, medium works pretty good. It's not necessarily for the psychotic alcoholic, though. <laughs> It starts off with a bang, you stay sober, and then you procrastinate on the parts you don't like, maybe the God steps or the inventory steps. One meeting a week, that should hold us together. No. Less and less self-examination. It's hard to self-examine when you're taking others' inventories. Uh, no effective sponsorship. You can say you have a sponsor, but it's been months since you've talked to him. Um, and service at a group level. The mistaking for activity for action does not mean that the activity is bad, but there's lots of people in AA that say, well, I don't sponsor people, I do other things. So, and they're, you know, their secretary of the meeting, they flip hamburgers at the Labor Day picnic, their treasurer, they do a lot of stuff, which is positive. It's all part of being part of the community. But in the end, I think it, there's an emptiness to that because it's all about me doing things. And then finally, week AA, and if you've ever been around for a long time, there's also some times that we've done week AA. But, but as a program of recovery, you know, unlike the medium, big chunks are left out of the program. You go to lots and lots of meetings and you stay away from the first drink. It's like being a sober elk. You know, the, the, the deal about being in the, in the group is, is that the primary thing is we don't drink. And we go and do lots of stuff. The people who founded this program absolutely did not believe that it was possible for anybody to stay away from the front drink without spiritual help. And the whole program was set up for those who were beyond human aid. And yet, we found that this process is so incredibly powerful that you can just do a little bit of the spiritual exercises and still not drink. Now whether you have a rich and full life, whether you actually have the spiritual awakening and all the fruits that, that come from Alcoholics Anonymous, we can, we can talk about that for a long time. If all you have is meetings, if that's all you have in AA, and, and you've fallen victim to the belief that if I go to 875,000 meetings a week, I'm doing AA, that that's what AA is, is lots of meetings. That's what it is. If you've fallen victim to that, it becomes critical how the meetings are run because that's all there is. The entire message that you receive is from the meetings. Therefore, it's, got to, it's critical. And I, my personal belief is that a lot of this, the AA has lost its edge, has come from this group. 
from people that are very concerned about how the meetings are degenerating. Because when they walk into that meeting, they're walking in to meet with their sponsor. That's their sponsor, is that meeting. That's where they get the message. That's the only place they get the message, is in that meeting. That there is nothing underneath it. There's no underpinning to hold us up. We're not walking in there to look for people to work with. We're walking in there to actually hear the message that we need. Whenever I hear somebody say that I, it's been a while since I've been to a meeting and I get really squirrely, I wonder about that. You know, I mean, if you're 20 years sober and you're going to eight or nine meetings a week, I personally think there's something wrong. You know, there, how could it be that? How, don't I have a life? I mean, the way it looks a lot is that you're working with a lot of people. There's people at the house. There's people you're on the phone with. There's people you're interacting with. You've got guys that are coming over and you're sitting reading the book with them, working the steps with them. I mean, to me, that's kind of the heart and soul of the whole thing. Just my opinion, but it's a really good one. <laughs> he criticizes me when I go to five meetings a week. I never criticize. <laughs> so the other thing that we think that's really important is, aside from this idea that the, that the, that the core of Alcoholics Anonymous is, is working with others, 